How'd it feel? Did it go as you expected? Yeah, the race went pretty much exactly how I expected. Uh, the only thing I probably thought I was gonna run like 20.99 or 20.98, but 20.04, I mean 19.98. Ha, my bad. Don't do that. 19.99, 19.98, but 20.04, perfectly fine with control of the race. Um, to be honest, I still feel like I got a ton more in the tank. We really emphasized not doing too much today. It was kind of almost like treating it like, I guess you call it a recovery day, but you know, with a, a hard uh, run at the end of it. Does the 100, doing the three rounds of the 100 before this for the first time, does it make you a little bit tired or does it invigorate you for the 200? To be honest, I, I think it just makes me more excited. Of course, it was you know, really hot out there and uh, we got done with the race and I felt drained. But I think this, this sun is, is hot. It's really important to stay hydrated out here today. And uh, I feel like that's kind of been the, the biggest thing and the biggest challenge is gonna be the sun and making sure that I stay hydrated as we go through these rounds. Cause I've already done the 100 and now I gotta go into the 200 with a little bit of a load on, but I don't think it's gonna comprehend anything that I have planned for this week. Did you sleep after that 100? I did sleep at 1.30. <laughs> But that was mostly because of treatment. Treatment went long into the night. Well, it wasn't even really treatment. It was really uh, the fact that my food was taking too long to get there, and it, it took a long time to eat. But uh, yeah, I did get to sleep. Would you get to do any real celebrating that night? No. no. Let's just say I, I, I met up with a lot of the winners of the night before, and uh, a lot of them were drunk. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh yeah. Not everybody does two events. Like, okay, yeah. What did you think when you got the outside lane here, when you saw that lane draw for you? I was like, they love to put me in lane two and the outside lane. <laughs> but to be honest, I, I'm kind of starting to get used to running first. I kind of like it now. I get to set the tone, get to put everybody on their toes. And the outside lanes in the 200, you know, um, those are usually where I like to stay. So I don't have a problem with an outside lane. You've been doing the 200 for so long. Yeah. What does Lance tell you now going into another championships in the 200? It's so funny that you say that because we were walking into the call room and he was like, all right, set it up. And you know what? You know what to do. Just, just get in there and do it. Trust and believe. I was like, yeah, coach, I got you. I know what I'm doing. He was like, yeah. So we've gotten to that point where we know each other so well. We know what the goal is. We know how we've been thinking. We're very on the same wavelength. So it's no longer, you know, telling me what to do. It's just, hey, bullet points, get it done. What did Lance say about the number final? Was it like a 10 out of 10 or anything? Hey, we, uh, you know, he came into the, the back room. We celebrated, you know, we were dabbing up. He was really excited. And then, hey man. And then uh, as we were sitting down for a little bit, I was like, we gotta run another 100. I gotta run that 9.7. I'm not okay with that 9.8. It was like, we, I had way more in the tank. He was like, yeah, I got a little greedy too. I needed to see a 9.7 on there. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe head off to Prefontaine or something. You got a different celebration plan for the 200? I saw the hats with the, the one yeah. for the 100. You got the two. Uh, to be honest, hopefully we can rip another jersey. I've already said that I'm not ripping a jersey unless I get another American record or a world record. So. No, That's the, the plan. The Peacock documentary, I read that you were funding some of the production costs of that. Yeah. How does that divide? Is NBC, what are you paying for? What is NBC? Yeah. So at for? first it was me and my agent paying everything. Um, and then as the season went on, you know, NBC, you know, we re signed another contract with Comcast for the Olympic year coming up. Um, I've kind of always, since 20. Since 2019, I've actually been in contract with Comcast. Usually, a lot of Olympic sponsors will drop their uh, athletes after the Olympics, but they really liked me and they said that we want to keep you on for the rest of the years. And we just re-signed and they funded. Uh, Adidas said later on that they would fund as well. We, I just signed a contract with Visa. I wasn't going to, but then they said they'd contribute to the uh, docu-series as well. I signed that contract. I said anything for anybody who wants to you know, put money into that. So to where it was looking like everything, now it's looking like maybe like 15% of me and my agent. So if none of those stents wants to just step in, would you and like Paul come at 100% of it? We would, be, anyway? we would be funding the whole thing. No, sorry you posted a bunch of uh, Just a quick question. What do you know about the Brazilian culture for anything to do like that? No. <laughs> anything, like food or something that you know about? Adventure. I know the Olympus was there, and I didn't make the team. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, you shared the split of the 100. You know, yeah. The analysis. What did you take from that, seeing those numbers? The 60 meters. Finally running 6'4 in the first 60. You know, that's something me and my coach said the whole time. He's like, you're, you are a 6'4 runner. If you run 6'4 in the first 60, the race is yours. Nobody's going to be able to touch. 
handle the next part of the race. And then finally, uh, we've heard some athletes say that the track is kind of hard. Is that true? What is your impression of it? And uh, having a few races on your body, is there any impact? You know, the, the, to hear you say that tells me that a lot of people haven't run the circuit enough because they haven't been to Shanghai. And that is a hard track. It's literally what happens to Mondo when it's been in the sun too long. Literally, your spikes don't even go into the track because it's so hard. But it's still a very fast track. So hearing people athletes say that this track is hard is very funny to me because I would call it, you no. Know, Running on clouds, to be honest. What I know this little double would mean a lot to you. I'm Two just, more questions. I'm just curious what it would mean for your coach Lance, uh, coach Lance, right? Because Tyson was the last American yeah. to break, and of course he coached or to do the double, and he coached yeah. him, right? What would it might this mean to Lance? To be honest, I, I think I saw a lot of it yesterday, or not yesterday, but after the hundred. You know, I've been world champion in the 200 for two years now, and you know he's been excited. He's like, hey, you know, that's I guess it's done. But I think he's really, really been kind of fiending for that 100-meter champ again. And, you know, there's only one, and it's hard to get. And, you know, since, he, you know, the last one he had was Tory Bowie. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, hasn't been hidden. And, you know, it's been a, a, a journey for both of us because we knew we, eventually we would get here. But to finally be here, I, I think, you know, it actually hit him a lot more. <laughs> And, uh, and now that we both know that the double is very much in sight, you know, we're ready to make history. Thanks. 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 Thanks.